Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and the day has finally come where I'm able to register to try to get the Ford GT. Uh, I saw the link online, everybody tagged me in it, so time to log on to the Ford GT website here and do the process. Let's see what happens. All right, first thing, fair enough. They want your personal information. You got it. Uh, application must be in by April 13th, uh, must be in by May 12th. Applicant and Ford. This is you telling them about your relationship together. I am, was a Ford GT owner, check. I own a Ford vehicle. I don't think I do at the moment. Um, I use company Ford vehicles in business, I do. Uh, company's a supplier, no. My company's a strategic alliance, yeah, hell yeah. I'm definitely a strategic alliance. All right, the third thing they're looking for here is whether you've owned a Ford GT before, and everybody's gonna be like, yeah, of course I owned it, and they're gonna get all these applications saying that they've owned a car. Then they ask you for the VIN number, the real truth. Uh, and then you're gonna say, yeah, yeah, I was the original owner of Ford GT. Here's where I think it's a good qualifier. The people that bought Ford GTs back in 05, 06 probably should get first dibs. They took the chance on the cars. They actually made a good play on it, but they took the chance on it. And right now that should be a strong consideration factor. And I'm not just saying that because I was one of the guys that bought them in 05, 06, but uh, that should be a strong consideration factor versus the people that bought them because they saw them going up in value. I put my VIN number in, and if somebody else uses the same VIN number, you know what happens? They're going to go back and they're going to look up, that guy didn't do it, he's out for lying, that guy had the car, makes me look even better. And it gives you the option to add another Ford GT. I don't got that yet. Um, have you driven your Ford GT on a racetrack? Yes. Are you a member of a Ford GT club? No. Or have you attended the Ford GT event? No. Strategic Alliance with Ford Motor Company. Here's where it's happening right now. Strategic Alliance, Super Speeders, Adventure Drives, Gotham Dream Cars, Beverly Hills Rent-A-Car. I got them covered from multiple angles. Uh, how many car years have I been with the current company? 14 years. I've, I've got plenty of that. Hopefully that's a strong deciding factor that people get to see the car. Here's where I get a little nervous. The car collector part. Because the car collector part, even though you guys are impressed by my cars, if there's guys coming out being like, yeah, I got three Zondas, four Koenigseggs, two Enzos, and a Bugatti, I can't compete with that. If you've got six or eight or $10 million worth of cars, they may feel obligated. Yeah, you know what? These guys have prestigious cars. By giving them the cars, people are going to think it's a better car because the guy who owns an Enzo is also the guy who's going to buy a Ford GT. I'm hoping that's not the case. Uh, they're asking for your most significant cars. I don't know, I put the Lamborghini, LP640, the GT3, and the 360 Spider, because I guess they're the three most expensive that, like, sound cool. Um, and the most, if not listed above, because likely it wouldn't be, what's the most significant Ford or Lincoln in your vehicle collection? And that's a retired one. That would be the Ford Cobra R, 2000 Cobra R, which there were only 300 of them, so just the fact that I owned it for four years should carry a little weight. Ford GT and Cobra R, there's not a lot of guys out there that hit two of those. Um, collection is private. Um, public influencers, tell us your reach. Online video and podcast, thank you guys. Just thumbs up, like, do whatever you got to do. Um, briefly describe your role as a public influencer. I have a large YouTube channel called Super Speeders Rob. Uh, also corresponding Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. So I got that covered. Describe your audience demographic, the Mustang audience. I've got 18 to 34 year old guys, 98% male. Uh, I applaud the 2% of females out there that actually watch my videos. However, I think of that 2%, like 99% of the 2% is just kids using their mom's computer. Prove me wrong, all the women comment away. Um, and then links to the channels, you got that. Motorsports community, do I have a sanctioning body license? No. Do I have a competition license? No. Describe your activities, no, nothing there. Um, any highlights of your motorsports career, i.e. specific races won? I have participation trophies from the Silver State Classic, and I beat my brother in a drag race once. Honest. Next, your style. We want to know more about what drives you. Can you provide a link to a photograph document, a short video that helps why you'd be a good GT owner? Videos must be 60 seconds or less in length. Well, I'm not going to make a specific video for that. This one may count, but it's longer than 60 seconds. 
I put the video link in here of me wanting to buy a Ford GT from the previous video. That's the only video I put in. Then they ask for any relevant photos or documents for consideration. They can get tell from the video I don't need to put photos in here. Then they say, is there anything else that I would like to tell them for consideration of my application? And verbatim, nope, if you can't make a decision with what I've provided, keep it. This is the most work I've ever gone through to potentially buy a car. It's a fair point, right? Like, like they're, they're essentially making people beg to buy the car. So that's the end of the application. Consent, 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 send it in. Now, what ends up happening is that with this application, there is no, there is no weight to this application, really. This is purely an application. Everybody I know that, that has a car or is even interested in cars has applied for a car which is stupid because that defeats the purpose of the application. Not everybody's going to buy the car. Even if they say, yeah, you can have it, they don't have the coin to throw down on it. So they're wasting a lot of time and effort. And I would say a marketing ploy, they're not saying like, hey, give us a $50,000 deposit. If we don't choose you, we'll give you your $50,000 back with interest. They're not doing that. They're just purely going out there and having everybody, Shavam, Brian Ortiz, uh, Noah, you, you name it, every dealer on the planet has already applied for one of these cars trying to like say they deserve it. So Ford's got a lot to go through. They got a lot on their plate. I did my best without kissing as much ass as, as some of the other guys are doing. Cause look, it's a cool car. I'd like to buy it, but I'm not going to beg for it. Like there's other cool cars out there also that I would like to own. And this is a lot of money. It's, it's a considerable amount of money and, and you shouldn't have to beg a company to buy a $450,000 car. So now we wait. Thank you for watching. I'll keep you posted.